My story begins in South Philly. I'm Thelma Wright. I'm Shauna Mary Scott. I am Jamila Davis, and I once was federal inmate number 592-53053. I am now Dr. Jamila T. Davis. Since my episode aired, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, stage two. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy, but I am grateful to God that I got through it. It's something else that I can add to my story and talk about to try to help someone else. Since my episode of American Gangster Trap Queen series aired, my life has definitely changed. The show brought about great notoriety about my story and some of the things that I used to be about, but it also brought some recognition to the work that I'm currently doing today, which is empowering at-risk youth. I got my PhD, so I'm now Dr. Jamila T. Davis, and also I actually found love. For someone to show up in my life when I least expected it and to fill all the voids that I was looking for, it just means everything. So I guess it's safe to say I'm madly in love and really, really happy about the next chapter of my life. Since the uh, show here, I have gotten my license to be a drug counselor in Ohio. We started a project called the New Freedom Project. And this will be designed like violence interruption strategies, like Operation Ceasefire. That's the first step of it. In our particular program, we're going to be addressing mental health in the Black community. We have just hundreds and hundreds of young children who are suffering from PTSD. They've seen so many people killed and harmed and been to so many funerals. A lot of these kids are suffering from something that's actually been identified by the psychiatric community as fatalism. They don't even think they're going to live. So, you know, any young person who does not even think they're going to make their 21st birthday, they don't plan to become a homeowner, business owner, have a job, plan for retirement because they think they're going to die anyway. So they live pretty reckless. And I think that's a whole lot of what we've been seeing lately with this just rash of gun violence and murders and homicides and all types of violence that you could think of. We're, we're experiencing that in our communities. And in fact, on um, June 18th, um, my grandson was murdered. I'm not comfortable with that label, Trap Queen. I'm not comfortable with Queenton label either because I never considered myself one. The way I lived my life and what I did was for survival. It was for me to be able to take care of my son, to give him the best education that money could buy, and to ensure that we lived good. So I would really, you know, like people to understand that and also understand that when you get as much education as you can. If I would have gone on to school, you know, to college younger, then my options to me would have been greater. Trap queens kind of like make me think of somebody who's like very glamorous and, you know, lively and partying and traveling everywhere and stuff that was never really my forte. I'm more community-minded, and most of the time, money and effort that I had went into trying to help rebuild my community out there. Yeah. Today, family means everything to me. Before, I was willing to, you know, risk my freedom and my life and chase the material things. Now, I chase my family. I am the founder of the VIP Online Academy, empowering youth and making sure that they don't make the poor choices that I once did. And, you know, I try not to be judgmental at all when I come into these spaces. And I kind of work with them and bond with them by teaching them entrepreneurship skills, right? So I teach kids how to secure the bag, how to tap into their gifts and talents, and how to boost their confidence and become their greater self. What I'm really most passionate about is doing the mentoring program for females as well as males. And now I'm going younger with children. I mentor education over incarceration because I'm trying to get people to understand, especially our young people, 
that it's important for you to get a really good education because no one can take that from you. You know, even if you do make a mistake and you are incarcerated, the knowledge that you have cannot be taken away from you. And I want our women to understand that they need to make decisions that are best suited if they have children for their children. I made some poor choices and that I take responsibility for. But in my case, Lehman Brothers Bank was some of the biggest fraudsters in the world, right? And I was accused of bringing them down. It was good for folks to kind of see that I wasn't just this bad guy. When I discussed the domestic abuse and my shooting, a lot of people don't seem to understand that when you love hard, it's difficult to just walk away from a situation when you're in love with someone. It's just not as easy as some people seem to think. And unless you've gone through a domestic abuse situation, sometimes you're not gonna fully understand. People have a tendency to wanna to judge people for what they're doing and how they're handling their situation. It's important for me to let people know that a lot of us that are considered formally incarcerated or as someone call us a felon, we are not the title that you give us. Our story, our pain is bigger than what you see. And I wanna let folks know there is such a thing as a redemption story. The truth of the matter is, it's low self-esteem that landed me in federal prison. I didn't love myself enough. Because if I loved myself enough, I wouldn't have made the poor choices that landed me such a lengthy sentence in prison. I'm not all the way there yet. I'm first to admit it. Daily, I have to talk to myself. I actually record love notes to myself to remind myself who I am, to remind myself of my worth. So today, I thrive on self-love, self-acceptance. So I'm not just doing it for the Joneses and for the other people, I'm doing it for me. 